G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we're gonna recreate a video I made five years ago and look at 12 of the weirdest games we saw during the 2024 AFL season. Now what constitutes a weird game? I suppose it's a little subjective, but I've gone ahead and picked 12 games from this year where either the result doesn't make sense, either in hindsight or at the time, or perhaps where the game flow was just simply bizarre. So I'm gonna count back from the game I ranked at 12th all the way to the strangest game of the season. And spoiler alert, the top handful of games in this list are real doozies. While you're there, just quickly check and make sure you're subscribed to this footy channel. Cheers. We'll start off with a bit of a softball. Round 24 when Geelong smashed the West Coast Eagles by 93 points. Now there is absolutely nothing strange about this result on paper. This sort of result happens often when the Eagles travel to GMHBA. But if you watch this game, you may remember the incredible halftime score, where the Cats led 114 to 14. They became just the 8th team in VFL AFL history to lead a game by 100 points at half time. They would then lose the second half by 7 points. Next on the list is the round 8 showdown between the Crows and the Power. If you've been following showdowns in recent years, this result may not seem strange at all, given this was the third game in a row the Crows had beaten the Power despite being ranked lower on the ladder. However, given the Crows finished in the bottom 4 and the Power qualified for top 2, it still has to be considered a significant upset. One of the strangest upsets of the season would also have to be the Round 5 clash between Richmond and Sydney at the MCG. Given it was early in the season, I'm not sure the magnitude of this upset would have rippled through the AFL as much as if it had happened, say, a month or two later. Richmond prevailed by 5 points over the Swans that day, meaning that the eventual Wooden Spooners had beaten the side that would comfortably finish with the minor premiership. It would take Richmond until Round 13 to claim their second and final win of the season, and by then, the Swans sat two wins clear on top of the ladder with a game in hand. The ninth weirdest result of this year would have to be the Round 15 clash between Port Adelaide and the Brisbane Lions at Adelaide Oval. Despite the home ground advantage, the 13th place Lions belted the 7th place power by a whopping 79 points. Brisbane's flag winning season we know is quirky, where they overcame a poor start to eventually win the Premiership, but given they sat 13th at the time, they still finished 3 spots below the power and won by such a significant margin. This game definitely qualifies as a weird result. In round 19 we saw the 3rd place Cats play host to the 10th place Western Bulldogs at GMHBA. The Cats for many years have been known for their success rate of wins at their home ground, although there's no doubt over the last couple of seasons a few teams have had their measure there. That being said, this particular loss at home by 47 points stands out as the most unexpected. The conditions were horrid, and the Bulldogs had a staggering 35 scoring shots to 13 from Geelong. As a side note, we'll pay honourable mention to one of Geelong's earlier losses at home to the Power in Round 9. The Power kicked the first 8 goals in that game to open up a 49 point lead, before a crazy second half comeback by the Cats got them back within 6 points. Given the power finished higher than the Cats, the result itself is not crazy, but the flow of the game was very peculiar. We'll put a pin in this result and reference it again later in this video. Let's shuffle back to a clash in round 12 between Melbourne and Fremantle in Alice Springs. In hindsight, we know Melbourne's season really crumbled in the second half of the year, but at the time of this game, they sat in the top four. Very few could have predicted, I'm sure, that 9th place Fremantle would hand Simon Goodwin his biggest ever loss in his 172 game career to that point. The Dockers smashed the D's by 92 points, with this game perhaps being the catalyst for the Demons sliding to a bottom 5 finish. Sliding into my top 6 weird results of the season, I've got the round 10 clash between the Gold Coast Suns and once again, Geelong. This game was surprising for the upset result, the margin between the two sides and also the high scoring nature of it. The 10th place Gold Coast batted the 2nd place Cats by a whopping 64 points, in a game where both sides scored more than 100 points. The Suns made it 6 straight wins in Darwin, and did so by kicking their highest ever score in club history of 164. Oh you thought we were done with Geelong, it's not my fault they were involved in some wacky games this year. This time it's a good result however, the first qualifying final between the Power and the Cats at Adelaide Oval was definitely a bizarre result. The Power had clinched a top 2 finish with a strong end of the year and earned the right to host Geelong, only to get mercilessly pumped by 84 points. Geelong seemed to go into a gear we hadn't seen from them in 2024, leaving the Power to reflect on what had become a woeful recent finals record. Given the latter position, late season form and the fact that the Power had beaten Geelong at their home deck this year, this result is pretty inexplicable. 
we're up to our fourth Weeders game of 2024. And once again, I find myself talking about the same teams. This time, I'm talking about the round 10 clash between Port Adelaide and Hawthorne at Adelaide Oval. Hawthorne had had a pretty poor start to the season, and despite coming off two close wins in a row against the Dogs and the Saints, they sat in the bottom four going into this game, while the Power sat in sixth. Hawthorne blew the Power away early to lead this game by 41 points in the third term, which was shocking in itself, but the drama didn't stop there. With the game seemingly buried with 30 seconds to go, Port Adelaide needed two goals to win, and did exactly that, with the match winner coming just two seconds remaining on the clock. Port Adelaide had pulled off their equal greatest comeback in club history, and frankly this game could have been a worthy number one on the list. Given Hawthorne's rise following this, I'm not sure if this result is as weird as others, but it could conceivably have been considered game of the year. Making the top three of weird games was the first Western Derby of the year. With the Eagles having become a diabolical team for the best part of three years, few would have given them a chance of beating Fremantle in this game, let alone do it in the manner that they did. Fremantle had had a strong start to the season, while West Coast had just come off their first win of the year. Despite an improved fortnight, if you had told anyone before the game that the Eagles would lead Fremantle 93-29 to at three quarter time of this derby, you'd have been laughed off. At number two, I've got a high scoring epic thriller between North Melbourne and Collingwood in round 14. Going into this game, North sat in last place with just one win all season, which had come just one week before, whilst the Pies had wrestled their way back into third on the ladder. No one could have reasonably predicted North kicking eight first quarter goals to two and opening up a 54 point lead in the third term. That in itself was strange, let alone the fact that Collingwood came back and won, which made it the equal seventh best comeback in the history of our game. Just to add to the epicness of this encounter, Bobby Hill took mark of the year in this game. At number one on this list, we've got perhaps one of the weirdest games I can think of in my time watching football. It wasn't a bottom side beating a top side, nor did it involve a comeback of epic proportions. This was a clash between the 7th place Port Adelaide against the Sydney Swans who led the league by 6 premiership points at this stage. It wasn't just the fact that the Swans didn't show up to this game, it was that they allowed Port Adelaide to score 71 points before registering a single score of their own. They would eventually lose by 112 points, consigning John Longmire to the greatest defeat of his career. And the funny thing is, Guess which one of these teams beat the other to qualify for the grand final this year? So, those are the 12 weirdest games from 2024 that I can find, but the season in general was full of quirks. Hawthorne started the year with one win from its first seven games, and then spent the second half of the season as one of the most dangerous sides of the competition. The eventual premiers, Brisbane, would win just two of their first seven games of the year. They would also be just the second team to win the premiership from outside the top four under the current final system. In another coincidental twist, guess which team lost both grand finals to the two premiers from outside the top four, despite being minor premiers both times? I'd hope you'd be able to guess that it would be Sydney. And perhaps the most shocking start of season 2024 of all, I've saved it for last. Over the course of this season, more than half the audience that has watched this channel has not subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you did consider doing so. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.